Welcome back. Today we'll be making a, a ping pong game, you know, nothing too hard, nothing too serious. Just a ball bouncing from different paddles, left to right. And it should be pretty easy for us to do. Yeah, we'll get, you know, we'll just get rid of the cat. Fortunately, he's being used less and less, you know, but I'll try and use him in, uh, for today. Just going to let that load in a bit. We're actually going to need two of it, so I'm just going to make another one. Forgot how to spell it just now. Kind of embarrassing. So now we have this. So we're just going to set this to zeros for now. So now we just take this. You know, maybe I should at least set the Y to zero. And then, you know, just turn it 100 to 180 degrees. Because that's all we're going to need for today. And move it to, you know, whatever exposition you feel is right. I'll keep it at 185. And for the first one, I'm going to have negative 185. Negative 185. Put it at the exact same spot. And then for this, we just need 180. So now they're both at the same spot. Oh, never mind. This is just one above. But there we go. Now they're at the same spot. And what we need for the first paddle is... And surprisingly, we don't need when green flag is clicked for the first to uh, start the code. What we want is when space key is pressed. We're going to need two of these. And then for the first one, we're going to click the uh, W key, which usually in games makes you move forward. And then the S key makes you move backward. So now we're going to go under motion and change Y by 10. But well, we're going to increase that to 15 so the paddle moves uh, faster. And then change this over to negative 15. Negative 15. And just so like they start like at this spot, we want set Y. Now we're going to use the window flag. So set, when we click it, it automatically sets it to this. So under paddle two, we're just going to do the same thing. But instead of W and S, we're going to use the up arrow and a down arrow. And same Y coordinates. So 15. And negative 15. So now if I click W, it moves. Click S, it goes the other way. Click my up arrow, that one moves. Click down arrow, and it moves. And also, we also want this to... We also wanted to set go over to just uh, zero degrees. So now, once we start it, it's automatically set to over here. Doesn't matter where you leave either of them. If you click it, it automatically comes back. So now we're gonna um, give it a backdrop because we don't want to be playing on just a white background. We're gonna use the boardwalk for today, and just so we don't make a mistake, we're just gonna come over on backdrops right here. And then delete this first one. So now this is our number one backdrop and our only backdrop. So from there, we're going to move over to adding a line, which usually this will be the net, but we're going to forget that ping pong has nets. We're just going to use this as like the out of boundary line. And we're going to get one, but we're going to duplicate it once we write the code on it. So we're going to have when green flag to start start it. And then we're going to add the forever loop. So it constantly keeps doing whatever it's inside here. Then the if then command. This conditions it to whatever it's we have here. If it's right, then it does what's inside here. So now we're going to scroll and take stop all and put it right here. So now over at sensing, we want to take touch and mouse pointer and then take, now you see, I made a mistake. We don't have anything. So for now we'll leave it at mouse pointer and just keep it there. So we're going to duplicate this. So now we have two. So the X position, we can easily just do 239, which is the border of my screen and set this to zero. 
and then direction over to 180, which is what we're going to use. So now it's at the end, which if the ball we're going to use, if it hits the red line, means it's out of bounds. So now that's just going to make it way easier for us so we don't have to actually like calculate it. So this we're going to have at negative 239. This is the other border. And then just zero to make it aligned. And for the final sprite we're going to need today, we want the ball, which has most of the code today, which is this one. We're going to take the ball. And depending on whatever you want, you could keep it that color. But what I want to do is over in looks, I can just come with you. I don't have to pull this into here. I don't have to take it and place it here. You can just click it and it randomly changes the color. You can set this to whatever number you want. Let's say 124. And then it's set, it just changes the color accordingly. So we'll set it back to 25. And we'll keep this one. You know, no, never mind. Because it can actually just blend into the borderline. Keep it, uh, let's see. Keep it at this light blue color. And now the long code. So we want the ball to just, uh, we don't want to control it manually of where it goes. So zero here and zero here. So motion under motion, we want set. No, we don't want set X, we just want go to. And under events, when clicked, so it doesn't matter where, the, let's say the ball's over there. And now if we click it, it comes back here. And you see the color of the ball just changes back because we didn't actually, we didn't have this on the code. So if we just keep clicking, and if we add it to the code, uh, right, right here, anytime we click the green flag, it changes the color. So we're just going to forget forget about that for now. And with this, this is the only code we're going to have on that. Now we want to, under events, we're going to take a few when green flags. We're going to take four more of these so we don't have to come back here for a while. Take four more. And now since we have two players, on the variable, we're going to make two different variables, which is player one score and another one for player two. You could name this according to how you want, but we'll keep it as that for now. So when green flag is clicked, we want it to set the scores back to zero. So we don't have to actually keep track of it. The game automatically does that for us. So now player one scores, whenever it's clicked, it sets to zero, and now player two. We don't want to make this mistake of forgetting this on just my variable, because once we pull it from here, yours still says my variable. So if we take it, it just says it. So it doesn't really affect it right here. So player one. And now we want it to sense if it's touching the paddle. So actually, we can just take this out for now. And we want it to move. So if we click it, it just moves. And so if we put it in a forever loop, it just moves and stays there. Which doesn't really do it for us, you know? So under motion, we want it to actually bounce when it touches the edge. So now, once it hits the edge, it bounces. But remember, on our, right here, it stops. So we're going to go back to the line, the first one, and change this to ball. And under line two, change it to ball as well. So once it hits the line, let's say if we stop it and enlarge it, so if we hit this, so it's the red, red line, it stops. So, and now we have this. So we don't really want it to just keep going left or right. So we can take the uh, turn 15 degrees and you can set this to whatever you want. Let's say 20. And only activate this so we can just see it, see it work. Yeah, now it just go, it goes around. 
maybe set it to something, you know, let's try the uh, pick random. Let's set it from um, 20 to 50. Stop it and start, you know, and start only this. So it goes around. We don't really care if it hits the top or the bottom, only the left or right, because we can't really block it from hitting those parts. So now we have this. We're going to set aside. And now for this one, this is the code that's going to tell us if it's actually, you know, when for it to bounce, because when it hits these two, so we can actually play the game. So we want the code to be constantly keep going, checking it, and keep repeating the code. So we always need that forever loop. Now we want it to, because the ball doesn't know when it's touching, when it's touching the paddle. So we want, we want the if statement, if then, and add a sensing and take touch and mouse pointer and just paddle, which is the first one. So if touch and paddle, then on the variables, we want it to change player one score by one. So that gives player one a score. So from there, we want it to actually bounce and we don't have like a um, if touch and paddle bounce like we have for the edge. So what we're going to do is under motion, we're going to take the turn and place it right here and also use the pick random and take from uh, 150 to 180, which is half a circle. And once it turns, we want it to just move like away. So we notice move 15. And now what we want to do is just duplicate this. And change paddle to paddle two. And also change player one score to player two score. So now we're gonna enlarge this. So this is just me, I'm not gonna be able to control it well. So see, each time it hits it, the score goes up. And see, sometimes it bugs out like that. So what we wanna do, see now it hits that, and then it just ends, which is what, which is the end goal for this. So now we want to just go through our code, you know, make sure, let's see what made it like give player two 15. So right here, it says move 15 steps. If such in paddle means it moves in just once it hits it, it just keeps moving instantly. So we could potentially reduce this to five. And try. Well, we always wanted to move to bounce farther, so we could do 50 to 80. So now we try it again. Hang on. We try this. Doesn't matter where, where it hits on the paddle. As long as it hits it, it counts. So now you have a working ping pong game. And with the score, you can see if it's a tie or see who wins. So that's all I have for us today. Please make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and also tell me what you want to see next time. And from there, I'll work on it. Thank you.